What does being Māori mean to you? Oh. Do you yeah. have any advice for uh, not just young Māori, but Māori in general out there who are feeling uncertain about their whakapapa, their Māori tanga? Mm. Oh, dudes and dudettes, welcome back to the channel, man. Sincerely appreciate you being here with me on today. In this video, we are watching Korero with Creators. This episode is featuring Stan Walker. Thank you for having me. <laughs> no worries. Firstly, bro, introduce yourself. Let the people know who you are. Uh, kia ora, uh, or Stan, or Stan Walker, I hope. Uh, no tauru na moana, I'm actually from kind of everywhere around Aotearoa. Tūhoi, Ngāti Pro. oh jeez. Te Aroa, every, everywhere, from from the north to the south, east to the west. <laughs> <laughs> and now I, I now I live in Whananui, which is the west, west. Yeah. <laughs> where's, where's? <laughs> me, me. Um, so let's kick it off with a pretty strong one and maybe a complicated question. What does being Māori mean to you? Oh, good question. I think just, uh, it's a lot of things. Uh, mm. Proud. Um, I think it's one of mana motu hake. my uh, greatest superpowers, mm. um, my uniqueness, and it's a big part of my confidence. Um, I think me being Māori, knowing who I am, where I come from, and who I come from is kind of made me into the person that I am today. Mm. Um, the way that I carry myself, the way... I said how important that was in the last video that I did where we did the TEDx talk with Tamaiti. That's exactly how I closed the video, that knowing who you are as it relates to your past is what makes you who you are. It's literally who you are. Wow. I present myself um, the way that I write music and who I write music for. Um, it's definitely my DNA. Um, being not just Māori, but being Tūhoe, Ngāti Parau, Ngāi Te Rani, Tūhaurani, uh, Ngāti Wai, all these different, I come, you know, I'm made up of so many different iwi. Mm -hmm. um, I think it just I hear proud. If I had one word, it just makes me feel proud. Yeah, amazing. And you were born in Australia, I believe, like many of our whānau Māori are these days. What has been your journey within Te Ao Māori? You know, were you always connected to māori -dom? Is that something that's come at different stages of your life? What's your history there? Good question! Because this is going to allow people that are not really in connection with māori -dom to not feel bad going into it and trying to to explore it and getting to know their culture and who they really are instead of who they think they are based off of where they are who they who they're around and other standards it'll be wonderful for people to start to dive into themselves oh wow um i've always had i've always been privileged enough to be brought up um, in both Australia and New Zealand but around our whānau in, mm. a, in, a, um, in a real whānau base like when we moved to Aussie we moved as a big whānau you know it wasn't just our immediate family it was our aunties uncles cousins right. so we kind of moved the pa all around everywhere uh, yep. all around Aotearoa and Australia hmm. so they moved as a unit that's cool my parents my daddy took up and left Barbados when I was two or three, and then me and my brother, wait, I can't remember now. He probably wasn't born at that time. Can't remember now. Point is that my daddy left and came to America from Barbados when I was like two or three, and then I stayed in Barbados with my mom and my grandma for like a couple years or a year from, for some stint of time that I wasn't with him, and then we came up here after. I forgot why I started talking about that. Um, but I grew up on the marae, so I had, I had the privilege of growing up on the marae and just only knowing being Māori. Um, mm. So I've, I've always just known I'm Māori, being Māori, but um, my, I guess my hiding in terms of like really finding out who I am was, um, was in the last like 15 years, um, really diving deep into my whakapapa mm -hmm. um, and because I spent you know kind of half and half in Australia and New Zealand um, being a 
starting out as an Aussie artist, um, nonetheless, Māori, doesn't matter mm. if I was in Africa, India, Ukraine, wherever, <laughs> yeah. um, I'm Māori, you know, through and through. Um, but I, I, I've always had this yearning for home, even when we moved to Aussie, because we moved back and forth, like, kind of every five years. Right. My mum went over happy with me, had me in Aussie, um, brought me back when I was a baby, then we moved back when I was four, moved back when I was nine. So back and forth, back and forth. Wow. But um, I've always had this yearning for home, even when I was a kid, when I was little, mm. I felt kind of out of place and displaced. I've always felt a deep uh, connection um, to my whenua. Uh, to my whānau, to my marae, to my hapu, to my iwi, to my mona, to my awa. Um, and so uh, that's always been in me, and it's been a, a, a non-stop burning fire uh, mm. within me. Um, but the journey into, like, really discovering myself has, has been, um, it's been a pretty full-on journey, an exciting journey, but, um, you know, it's come with a lot of challenges that I didn't really understand until i got older mm -hmm. um you know because we just grew up in a village when when i grew up back home up at the marae you know all my best friends and worst enemies were all my whanau right <laughs> you know huh. we grew up on the on the par on our par so every next door neighbor was my whanau right and we used to have little land walls when we were kids you know get off my <laughs> land you're on my land <laughs> <laughs> see not even not even hearing the stuff that we used to do this as little kids right um so you know i've always had that and and just growing up on the marae too like um i'm very thankful for that because i think uh in my whanau um i've continued that journey of like of reclamation but also being um unapologetically maori mm. in in any space and all spaces um but uh, it's come with challenges and I've had to learn, but um, yeah. So I've had a pretty kind of Maori upbringing in, in the sense that even in, in Australia, we had everyone living in the same house or the mm. houses next door or on the same street. Right. And we moved together all the time. So we never left uh, our Maori space in terms of like far no. Uh, whaka whanau natana and um, having those connections and and we were just ble I was blessed to have all my nannies especially and and, and my koko like always kind of feeding back into us you know our Maori tana um, mm -hmm. that's something that I wish I had I have I had and have zero family here that I know that is within a distance that we could see each other and be family and there was never a relationship developed to the point where i feel comfortable calling up my cousins that stay in maryland or my cousins that stay in new york and that's something that i've never had is as a family bruh a real big family not even big just real family that is not your immediate Mother, bro mother, brother, mother, father, brother, sister. That's not that man. Ugh. Because my mum and dad came from a generation where they just wanted to get away from the marae. They wanted right. to get away from the pa, where my whole life I've been trying to get back to it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that sounds like me right now. Just trying to get back home to Barbados. My daddy left. He did the best he could to leave a paradise location where people literally go on vacation to come up to Tampa, Florida. I'll never understand why it was in God's plan, I guess. But to, uh, I'm trying to go back. Me to me and my wife to move back to her pa in Fananui <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, now nah, it's been. It's been a it's been a journey now. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's been yeah. it's been one. Uh, that's pretty fortunate though, you know, because we, we know that it's one of the big issues that lots of our whanau who who do move to Aussie, and because like we know lots of Maori today live and are born and raised in Aussie, you know, 
having issues with feeling Maori enough if they do come back, you know, when those that do decide to make those journeys back or journeys of, of reclamation, reconnection, you know, they can have these issues with feeling Maori enough or, or you know, things like this. Do you yeah. have any advice for uh, not just young Maori, but Maori in general out there who are feeling uncertain about their whakapapa, their Maori tanga? Mm. Um, I think like you know, research Maori, we don't quantify blood. That's mm. a very um, that's a very Pakeha colonized way of you know. I think like you know, us as Maori, we don't quantify blood. That's mm. a very um, mm. that's a very Pakeha colonized way of you know how they've tried to separate us from our culture from our taha maori or taha indigenous or where we come mm -hmm. from um i only experienced that as a teenager when people would start saying how much are you or blah 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 and right. i never heard those things because in my family we go from like the whitest of white or blue eyes to dark as night with black eyes but right. we don't see each other different we never yeah. saw that until you're in the outside world away from your pa away from the marae away from tikana and kawa um mm -hmm. that you notice these things but um wow i think how interesting that is pakeha and the white man's way of thinking how much of this are you that goes back to for me personally in my own history being a black man that goes back to in my history as being three-fifths of a man because i'm i'm, I'm a person I'm, i got any bit of black blood in me so they consider you three fifths of a person. So that it it that wow man, I'm just constantly mind blown at how similar people's experiences are, and in that same contrast, how different experiences are. But it literally sounds like the Maori and the indigenous people of australia and new zealand and the black people of africa and and the irish people that with that uh used to it just sounds like everybody that is not a certain few in the crown are considered to be less than it's almost like if you're not part of the crown with a certain criteria that you meet you're considered brown that's so that's so it is what it is it's just mind-blowing to put all these connections together and say these words out loud that is the truth and has been our truth it's just wild to say them out loud and to realize that 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 garbage that I was just saying is our reality, bro. Dang. For me, uh, Fucker Papa was uh, was the kind of like um, was that poe in my life and has been that poe and that that security of like um, like just that matter of factness of like yeah, yes. no, I am. Yes. Because even if just say I only had one grandparent that was Maori, I would not exist if it wasn't for them. I mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to be who I am if it wasn't for them. For the sacrifices they made and all my tipping I made. For me to be here to be outrageous, to be incredible. And I think my advice to anybody who kinda doesn't feel Maori enough or they you know they have to always just say i'm part body i was like for me man i mean i can say this because I've, I've had cancer <laughs> but it's a terrible analogy but the way that i think is like if i just give you a little bit of cancer how much cancer would you have you'd have right. you'd have the whole shebang doesn't matter how right. small or big and um that's my thing perspective wow stan wow is that man it, it runs in your blood um and just if you once you find out not only who you come from i uh, sorry where you come from but who you come mm. from i don't think that you can be the same well for me i haven't been the same um and that not if you care and not if you let it not if you let it resonate not if you let it do what it's supposed to do in here if you dash it away if you push that away then it's not going to do what it's supposed to do knowing who you are knowing who, your path but if you allow that if you think on it if you marinate on that though 
you will be changed. Fucker Papa has given me that, like, you know, if anybody wants to check me, I'm like, oh, this is my fucker Papa. Yeah. I don't ever have to do that now because I just know who I am. So I'm yes. like, I don't have to, like, uh, justify myself. I yes. just am who I am, whether people like it or not, or people try to nitpick and say this and that. I get it all the time, but I'm like, oh, karoha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, so, it's one of those things. It's, it's, some... it's very interesting, man, to hear him talk so candidly about the struggles that him and his people are going through and how to approach it how to deal with it it's is exactly what people need and even separate from the maori people it's what brown people need it's what people that are that are in the positions that the aboriginals the maori black people everybody it's it's forgot what i was saying everybody need everybody that feels disenfranchised needs this message it's not just the maoris it's anybody that's disenfranchised and anybody that's living in their purpose can give this advice and it will be good advice to those who are receiving it and want to do want to make a change this is beautiful stuff we'll continue more of this later let me know in the comment section if you'd like to continue this is the first 10 minutes out of an hour and a half interview it looks like so let me know if you'd like to continue we'll do this thing chunk by chunk i appreciate you being here with me in this video and i pray i see you in the next one love